Notions family, I'm Katie from Game & Zach. I am here to talk holiday wear, specifically how to use the Tessa dress pattern to make your holiday dreams dress come true. <laughs> so what I love about this pattern is that it is completely mashable, it is adjustable, it is fun and easy to sew dress, but is customizable to your heart's content. So today what I plan on talking about is what fabrics to use so that you can get that holiday look, what modifications you can do and things that you can change to get your unique customized fit and design and give you a few examples of how I've used Tessa to make holiday garments for myself. Today's feature Friday pattern is the Tessa dress. So you can get that pattern for $5 today only on the Love Notions website. I will post a link down below in the comments. Come join me while I show you how Tessa can be a great pattern to use for your holiday sewing. All right, friends, let's talk about what really makes the Tessa for holiday wear, and that is fabric. So I've pulled out a few different fabrics that I would recommend for Tessa if you're going for a holiday wear look. Uh, first up, starting with the lovely sequins. They're so fun. They have so much dimension. They can be challenging to sew. There's definitely different types of sequins. This one is with a velvet back, um, so it's a heavier weight. Would make a beautiful Tessa. You could also go with some different other types of sequins. These ones are sheer, so they're more of a mesh sequin, so you'd need to line that. Um, you can do a lace, which I can show, I'm going to show you in my lace dress that's lined as well. Or you can do a mesh. Now remember, Tessa has an option for the yoke being separately a uh, different fabric, so you could just do a mesh top um, yoke or a lace yoke, and then have the rest of it be a solid or uh, coordinating fabric. Another option is pont. So Tessa requires a 20% stretch. So it wants really a mid-weight fabric and pont is really great for that. So it has a little bit more heft to it and sturdiness. It's going to smooth over your body a little more bit than other fabrics that cling more to your body. Great option as well is an athletic knit. So I have a printed athletic knit, which would make a really fun and flirty dress. Athletic knit, similar to pont in that it is going to hug your curves really nicely. So one fabric that isn't recommended, but you could use as a lighter weight. So this is a cotton modal. I am going to show you a dress that I've made with this with a hack. Uh, so this is great if you have something that you want that's a little bit more drapey. You're going to get a more casual look, but that's what this is. Then we move into like this. This lovely fabric is a mesh burnout and so it is sheer through so you would need to line it but it has a really pretty dimension to it and I would line it personally I'm going to make one with double brush poly as the lining so the one fabric that you're not seeing here which I would highly recommend is velvet I am out of velvet right now but that is probably my go-to holiday and Tessa wear fabric. It is going to give you shine, dimension, it's really that quintessential holiday fabric. So I would also recommend velvet as well. Another piece of holiday wear is color. You notice I really have a color range. Now I love pinks and reds, so that's why I have a little bit more of those. But holiday wear to me is a lot more of the jewel tones, the deep reds, burgundies, uh, greens, a rich hunter color. Um, you can still get away with a purple or champagne or black for, for sure, but you're gonna see that you're going to have a richer color base in holiday wear. That's not always the case, but that's something that makes it a little bit more holiday-esque to me. So let's, let me show you some of the ideas and things that I've made for Tessa and how to make them holiday ready. All right, here's what I have so far for this mashup. I have cut out the top bodice front of the course pattern. I have projected the Tessa. What I'm seeing right now is I have lined up the bodice piece on matching up the arm side of the two patterns. Um, I'm going to want to because make sure that I blend with the Tessa once I get to here, to the bust. All right, so since we're doing mash, I thought more about the details on how to do this. And the, what I've decided on is to make a binding piece to do on the back. So instead of doing the facing like in the chorus tutorial, 
you could do that process. I'm actually going to put a binding on the back of this that's going to be on the inside, just like how the Tessa is normally finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the neckline. Um, you can use it with a measuring tape. And then I'm going to cut this 90% of this so that it does have to stretch a little bit to pull. So it's going to make sure to pull this back neckline in. So my measurement was 10 inches. I'm going to cut it nine, nine inches. This is a one and three eighths inch wide, and then I'll cut it nine inches long. Now we're going to finish off the back of the bodice. I will go ahead and clip in the center of the band binding, and I'm going to match that center point up right sides together with the center point of the back bodice. And then I will lightly stretch to fit this around here. I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine or serger and sew it on using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So this is coming from the wrong side. I've stitched this on in place and then I have pressed the seam towards the binding. I'm going to, from the right side, I'm going to understitch along right along here on the inside of the band so that it lay, it keeps the seam allowance flat. Then I will flip it over, iron it again, and I'm going to top stitch along here. Now you could optionally choose to flip it over and create like a enclosed binding where you flip this like this so that there's not a raw edge. That's totally doable too, just your preference. This is what the back seam looks like. It does need to be pressed because it does stretch out a little bit. So this is the wrong side. So this is where it's understitched and then along the edge. So it has this really nice binding to it. Steam it so it'll pull back up together and then we can move on to the next step. All right, so let's get started on the front bodice. So what I have is the front pattern piece laid out right side up. If you want to finish the edge along the bottom of your drape, you'll want to sew along or serge along this bottom edge. I wouldn't recommend doing anything that's gonna to add too much weight to it because you do want this to be nice and light and fluffy for the drape. So what we'll do is we're going to take the finished back pattern piece wrong, right sides together. So we're going to lay it wrong side up and we're going to take the top left shoulder and match it up to this edge of the crossover and clip that in place. And then what we're going to do is we are going to sandwich the shoulder seam between the neckline. So what we'll do is we are going to wrap this over and around. So these will end up clipping together at the edge. And then we're going to have a clip here. Now make sure that you're, you haven't lost your shoulder seam in this piece. So you want to make sure that it's all the way enclosed without falling through. So I have that in here and I'm going to pinch it and clip it. So this should be three full layers, one, two, three layers together. And then we're going to repeat the same process over on this side. So you have three layers and if you look at it from the inside, you'll see that the, this will be enclosed it's pulled together. Now I would recommend stitching this on your sewing machine and not with a serger because that's going to help get a crisper line and not have as much bulk. Okay, here we go. This is what the drape looks like now. So we have the enclosed shoulders. This is where they're looking at the edges. They just drape nicely like this. And now I'm gonna finish the sleeves and the side seams. All right, here is my most casual Tessa mate to date. This is featuring the chorus neckline that we showed it, I showed in the hack. It is in a cotton modal, so it is the lightest. It does cling the most, so keep that in mind. But it is ultra comfortable. I could imagine just throwing on a blazer and some heels and dressing this up, but right now I have on some really nice boots in the midi length that kind of go down, and it's going to make you feel good. Another really great perk about Tessa is that it's completely mashable and has so many hacks created for it. If you look in the tutorial, there is instructions on how to mash 
Tessa bodice with the Sybil skirt bottoms. Now Sybil contains seven different skirt options and so it's really the unlimited possibilities. That's going to be the hack I'm doing today. I'm going to use the beautiful burnout and the yoke option of the Tessa bodice with the swing skirt from the Sybil pattern. So what I'll do is I will cut out the bodice main pieces out of double brush poly. Um, then I'm going to cut out the yoke as well as the bodice pieces in the burnout and then I'll cut out both in the skirt. I'll show you how I construct that when I am lining it. Now the construction on lining is going to be a little bit different. Um, if you are using a fabric that has a pre-finished edge, you would probably want to hem the lining first so that before you construct. That's just my little tip. Another thing, if you're looking for ha more hack ideas, I know that I've used hacks from the blog, which include the front tie hack, which I can show you here from this adorable Easter dress that I made. But this also contains a hack on how to add a bishop sleeve. So there's so many different possibilities and really this pattern mashup is endless. Let's get started on this hack. Okay, so I have everything cut out. So it might look a little odd based on the lighting, but what I do have is four skirt pieces, two lining and two main. I have the front bodice cut on the fold in the lining and the main. I have the back bodice not cut on the fold in the main and the lining. I have sleeves and front and back yoke, which are not going to be lined. So those are just the main fabric. And then I have one neck binding piece. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the bodice and then I will focus on the skirt. The skirt's pretty simple to put together. So for the bodice, we need to get this prepared so that we could add the yoke. So first up, we're going to construct right sides together, the back pattern piece back seam on both the main and the lining. I am going to do this as one piece because I would like less bulk and I don't want this to shift around. I have the first layer I put down was the main right side up and then I put the main right side down. Then I put the lining right side up and the lining right side down. So these are all stacked and I'm going to sew with the 3 8 inch seam allowance along this and then I should be able to open it back up and the seam will be enclosed. This is what it looks like from the main side no visible seam and from the inside no visible seam and the seam is actually right inside now what we'll do is we will add the yoke to the back pattern piece so laying it right side up with the lining stacked on top we'll take the back piece and put that down right sides together clip it and then stitch all right, so this is how this looks. The seam is on the inside along here. I would recommend top stitching this down. The seam is going to automatically want to lift upright, which is fine if you have a fabric that you want to. Otherwise, you can top stitch it down um, and then it won't be visible through the lace or the sheer mesh that you're using. For the main bodice, it's going to be a little different because there's no set front seam to sew. So what we'll do is we'll place the lining right side down, the main right side up, and then we will put the front yoke piece wrong, wrong side up so that the right sides are together. And stitch along here again, and then top stitch. Then what we'll do is we'll take the main the front bodice and sew the shoulder seams and then attach the sleeves. Um, you can at this point um, very carefully press or top stitch the seam towards the back of your garment if you'd like. That'll ensure that those threads aren't as visible when wearing it, especially since it's a mesh. Okay, the next part is the skirt. So I have, like I said earlier, the swing skirt from Sybil Cut right now. I have both the lining and the main, since this is a sheer fabric. I have it laid out so that the seam is going to be enclosed along the edge. Now you could sew this in two separate pieces. You could put the lining pieces right side together and the, the 
uh, main pieces right side together and then you could just have the, the pieces um, move around as you walk. I prefer them to stick together because double brush poly can cling and I would rather these two be uh, one piece. So what I've done is I've set up this crazy layer of things. So on the bottom I have the lining wrong side up followed by right side up of the main then wrong side up of the main and then right side up of the um, lining. So what I'll do is I'll go along just the side seams, the two side seams, and I'm going to stitch that with my serger. I am going to increase my differential fret feed so that it's less wavy. And then after that, I can put my turn this right side out, put my bodice um, and attach it, and then hem the whole thing, and I'll be all done. Here's the finished dress. So this was without adding additional length. I do like a shorter style, so if you are mashing the Tessa bodice with the Sybil uh, swing skirt, you might in, you might include some additional length on the bodice to lower it or add length to the skirt itself. I love the flirty length. It's not super visible that the yoke is not lined, but I like that I know that as well as the sleeves. And it's just a fun little number. I have a cocktail party this winter that I am planning on wearing it for in a couple of weeks, so. I'm pretty sure this is my favorite Tessa I've ever made. It features a fuchsia lace that has a finished, beautiful scallop edge. So rather than hemming, I use that edging. I've lined the whole dress with nude swim lining, but kept the sleeves unlined for a nice dainty finish. This also has the bateau neckline and is a knee length. Here's proof that Athletic Knit for Tessa works wonderfully. This is a Tessa made from Athletic Knit. I've made the knee length, but I did shorten it one inch to fit on my one yard cut of fabric. I have hacked the sleeves to be a cap sleeve, and then I've used the standard scoop neck that Tessa is included with. I love this dress. It is a little bit more fitted being Athletic Knit, but I still think it's a spot on great fit and style. I hope that you were able to pick up some ideas on how to make your own customized Tessa for holiday wear, whether that's casual or a little bit more fancy or somewhere in between. What I love about Tessa is it's completely mashable, has tons of hacks that you can find on the Love Notions blog linked below, or even you can follow the tutorial on how to mash this pattern with the Sybil skirts. So lots of flexibility, lots of different looks, and you can get your own perfect for you holiday wear dress. So. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Katie from Gabe and Zach. You can follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Happy sewing. Mm -hmm.